we're going live everyone hello welcome back everyone happy monday we are chaotic as ever but we're here um we have a really great guest on tonight we have the wonderful gabby on who has been a listener of the podcast and we are so grateful to have you here um I guess we should just ask you some questions about yourself to kind of get a feel of you as a Hunger Games fan. Okay. So, first question. Are the cheese buns savory or sweet? Oh, my God. The most controversial question you could have asked me. This is the first one. <laughs> there's a radio. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. I'd have to say savory. There's a radio. Yes. Woo. There you go. Yep. Uh-huh. I Give mean, me just... It just doesn't make any sense for it to be sweet. I'm sorry, but Ooh, so fighting words. No, no apologies needed. <laughs> 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 okay, are we? I know it's a dumb question, but are we Team Gale or Team Pita? Oh my gosh! So I'm here for the Pita Love Love Club. Yes, but I stayed for the Gale Hate Club. That's yeah. Yes. Oh my god! Oh, I was worried there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. And then just tell us about your like I'm hunger. Kidding. Okay. Thanks. Just tell us about <laughs> mute yourself. Um, just tell us about your Hunger Games journey. Like, where did you pick up the book, the movie? Tell us about yeah. that. Yeah. So I feel like my journey is very different from, I would say, yours or Emily's. Um, I was introduced to it as it was coming out. I was in. I'm 23 now, so it's coming out, what, like middle school, high school. I remember going to the premiere to see Mockingjay in high school, but besides that, like, I picked up the books because a librarian recommended it to me after I finished Twilight, yes. and I was just, I, I loved it, but I was yes. too young to fully grasp what was going on. Um, I just couldn't understand it so much so that I was Team Gale whenever I was younger, and now, no. like, looking back, I'm like... <laughs> I just can't believe it but um but after let's see I guess this was literally maybe six months ago I was babysitting and the kids were asleep and I was looking at their bookshelf and I'm like hmm, Hunger Games I haven't read that in years let me pick it up I picked it up I couldn't stop reading it I read it that entire night and I bought all the books and then I realized Ballad was out and I went ahead and bought that and then after I finished everything I was like I can't process this because Walking Jay just totally ruined me and then I was like googling like on Spotify like Hungry Games podcast and your guys just came up and Aww. so I just binge listened to everything and it was just so great it totally helped me process the book uh, Suzanne as an author so it's just lovely but yeah, now I'm a die diehard fan, and um, yeah, and I can't stop talking about it. And you Yay. guys are great to listen to because I feel like I can talk to you guys as I'm listening. So, Aww. oh my gosh, so that was so nice. Yeah, <laughs> and it's such you. a cute like come around story. How at first it was it was one thing, and then it became a whole other thing at a different part of your life. So I yes, relate it, to that. Yeah, that's. Always a, a sign of a good author. Oh, go ahead. Uh oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> You're good. Okay, now go. Now go. Ask your question. <laughs> Mr. Chase. Oh, no. <laughs> Can anyone read mine? So what was he going to ask? <laughs> I was going to ask who our favorite tribute talk was. Ooh, oh dun, dun, my dun. gosh can you hear me now yeah we can hear you i was okay. gonna ask you who our favorite tribute talker was this is this is important my favorite tribute talker or my favorite tribute talk episode both talk. oh no <laughs> oh no <laughs> i'm kidding no no don't don't break us apart yeah <laughs> yeah okay, because on one relax. episode and destroys us <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> you know oh. it's okay so this is similar to like the hunger games right like we <laughs> have characters we love so much and but then as more are introduced we fall in love with the others too but that doesn't 
like stop us from loving our OG characters in the first place. Like all the love is shared, you know. Mm-hmm. He's saying and I'm so- an OG character. You're not an OG. <laughs> <laughs> you are one of the characters I was introduced to, and I'm like, oh, great, fabulous. I'm here for it, you know. <laughs> but of course, I was introduced to Tribute Talk because of Emily and Holly. So, um. yeah. <laughs> It was us all along. Sorry. <laughs> I like Gabby. She's great. Yeah, she's amazing. <laughs> oh my fan. gosh, stop. <laughs> okay. Um, shall we just dive into ballad news for tonight? Whatever we have. It's kind of not as much as usual, uh, but yeah. that's okay. <laughs> Girl. Girl. It's, gonna be it's so chaotic. It's going to be too chaotic. <laughs> we do have skirts we have skirts so should we start with those pictures including the francis photo that's what i'm obsessed with like that's Mm. that's definitely francis right it's a hundred percent francis it was pointed out that he was wearing a like puffy jacket and i'm like the north face yeah (laughs) that's him (laughs) i just love this photo um of him through the bushes like it's perfect like you can just see him it's so perfect. I think that should be my new wallpaper. <laughs> I think it's going to be, actually. Y'all think Dina got kicked off set or something for yelling at the extras? Ooh. Wasn't she in one of the pictures? Like, we have seen her, right? Wasn't she in one of, like, the lake house pictures? Or am I oh, imagining I that? I think so. That was uh, a while ago. Maybe I'm she did get fired. See, <laughs> see what she's up to. I like the the plaque for Havensby Hall. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Do we not Why like it? <laughs> uh, I just I think it at least okay. I'll reserve that one. It's definitely one you have to see on screen. But at least from the picture, yeah. it looks really shiny. It looks like papery, like a golden ticket yeah. from Willy Wonka. Yeah, that's what I thought too. <laughs> oh my god, it's like I'll reserve the rat. Willy Wonka. I'll reserve, I'll reserve the rat to see it on screen first. Yeah, maybe movie. wait. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> wait until we get to the movie, okay? No judging everything. I'm sure it looks <laughs> fine. Yeah, yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What else do we have of these pictures? Did Without Ronnie, finished? I'm like, what are we supposed to say? Ronnie is <laughs> Ronnie knows what to say all the time. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Um, what do did you all so I missed last week? Did you all talk about the skirts? Hey, Holly, you need to give us your <laughs> your thoughts on all of this. <laughs> we t- did talk about it in depth. Like, I don't to be honest with you, I don't have thoughts about it. I think like at this point, that. I'm just like they're doing what they're doing, and I guess I'll see it on camera and that's it. Like it looks absurd. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> But I get it. You know what I mean? Like, I get why they're doing the red. I don't know. But the skirts, I don't know. I, I, I don't get it. I get it, but I don't get it. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Still on it's a, a solo movie. Quote over here, I guess, huh? <laughs> it's like right. it's like that Harry Styles quote about like, oh, it's like a movie. You go to the movie and you experience a movie. Like, that's what I feel <laughs> like when I see those skirts. <laughs> Okay, Gabby, yes. what are your thoughts about oh. the set photos? Um, yeah, I, I'm a sim- I'm in a similar boat as you, Holly. Like I, I'm hoping that there's some movie magic that's going to happen. But yeah. <laughs> uh, um, initially, not a not a fan. I'm like it's just like pick a lane, skirt or pants. You know, like it's yeah, savory or sweet. <laughs> right right um yeah i'm just i'm I'm not entirely too hopeful but i'm just gonna wait till the movie and it'll be better when it's the movie because everything's always better so how are you feeling about ballad in general and the movie i just really want to see marketing happen for it and i understand maybe we're not in that stage yet of the movie mm-hmm. process and the, the making of the film but I'm so ready to see some 
like polished advertisement. I want to see a trailer. I want to see like their best foot being like taken, like their best foot forward. Because right now these like set photos, it's like, it's, it, I get more questions as I see it. And I'm just like, it makes me more anxious. And I just like really want to see it. I, I'm excited for, to see the movie. But, and I don't know how they're going to pack, like, that entire book into a movie. But I'm hopeful for it, though. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Were you a fan of Ballad? Or what were your thoughts on it? Like, where would you rank it with the other books? Oh, jeez. Oh, more tough questions. Oh. Holly. I know. Oh. I, love to put me, I love to hear everyone's thoughts on Ballad. <laughs> I actually really enjoyed Ballad a lot because of... Um, so the just the things that I've studied in school with like John Locke and Thomas Hobbes, I like seeing the their names on in the quotes on one of the first pages of the book. I was like, okay, I know this is gonna be amazing. I know this is gonna have so many layers to it. So just right off the bat, I was really pumped for it. And I'm glad that I didn't end up falling in love with um Choreo. I, I didn't want that type of like villain arc so mm-hmm. I think it's very well written but how I, how I would rank it uh, like I think it's just in an entirely different other category I don't I don't want to mm-hmm. rank it to the trilogy that's fair yeah yeah agreed <laughs> yeah it's very different especially yeah. reading Mockingjay I don't know like reading Mockingjay and reading Ballad Especially the chapters we're going to talk about tonight. I'm like, these are very different stories right here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think one leans in more into, like, the, the beginnings of war versus the ending of war. They're very different in how you see humanity is different. And these characters are so different. Like It, it makes sense why we see that contrast, you know? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. And then we got some unofficial casting announcements today from, is it Lily? Right. Yeah, Lily, who runs the, the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes Germany account on Instagram. Did some detective work, I guess, and found these names listed on like the, the agents' websites for the actors. So, I mean, I feel like it, that's pretty much official, but unofficial it's technically. Official. That's yeah. some super sleuthing for me. <laughs> right? Like, I know. Dedication. Very impressive. Some We've of these nothing. characters, I'm just like, I don't even remember. <laughs> Who is Floris? Like, I don't remember Floris. Floris, friend? I'm like, I've never read this name in my life. <laughs> I'm like, like I've read a lot of ballads. <laughs> it's just listed on, like, the, the sheet. That's all. There's no yeah. lines at all. But that sheet is in there, like, multiple times, like, yeah. with the names crossed out, and I'm like, how have I never seen this before? <laughs> <laughs> I think Arlo looks pretty cool. I forgot that we didn't have an Arlo yet. Do we have a... Is it is Lily an Arlo? Is that the name? Lil? Uh, Lil. Lil, yeah. Do we have Lil yet, or...? Uh, Lil Wayne. Don't, don't, don't think we have a Lil. <laughs> Chase. <laughs> Because that's kind of important. I can't believe there's still characters that we don't have. There's too many in this book. <laughs> that's why. Too Are they many. doing uh, Corio's uh, teacher person or is she cut out probably? I would think she'd be cut out. See, the in the uh, behind the scenes picture, there's like a lady at the top of the stairs. and Yeah, she's wearing like a black and white outfit. Yeah. Is it Satiria? Sateria Click and uh, and then Sejanus's yeah well. I forgot her name yeah is that Fabricia oh, Fabricia uh, yeah <laughs> Fabrice yeah Fabrice Fabrice <laughs> yeah yeah Arlo looks cool I don't know they all look fine <laughs> I definitely didn't picture any of these people so. <laughs> <laughs> No. Maybe Io Jasper has like the biggest role, like of well, of the piece. I think it's cool too. I like it. Io Jasper. I'll definitely be naming my kid though. 
Any other so- thoughts on ballot things or? Oh, I did like the clip that someone recently posted of Rachel's live yeah. where she's like gushing about oh, a tongue. Yeah. Oh my God. That was cute. <laughs> it really got me thinking too. I was like, damn, we really are going to have to like accept that we can't gatekeep him forever. <laughs> right. I, I know. I, I feel like he probably is going to become a big actor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's what happened with Jennifer, you know? Yep. And I feel like they have this about the same amount of fame pre movie. You know what I mean? True. I mean, Jennifer was in Winter's Bone, but like at the time, like if you asked any average regular person, like, hey, do you know who Jennifer Lawrence is? They would have told you no. And then, right. Like, hey, I mean, she was nominated for the Oscar like right when she was cast. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah. Tom has Billy the Kid, which is. Not really popular, but popular. I keep getting like, I keep yelling like Thanks. Billy the Kid TikToks on my For You page. Me too. What? <laughs> Is that fun? Like, I want that. For it. <laughs> yeah. And I haven't even watched it. I'm like, the algorithm is wrong. I haven't seen this. You're not spying on me properly. <laughs> what? I did not know there was a whole realm of TikTok for Billy the Kid. I mean, it's not like, you know extremely extensive or anything but it, i was like there's a comment section you know what i mean i'm like there's more than three people that's wild like <laughs> are they i mean are they hunger games fans is that why they're there or I didn't are really do people just enjoying further. this show yeah i didn't really do show. any like further investigation uh-huh. i just like came across like a billy the kid edit and i was like wait what and then i thought it was maybe like one of you that had posted it you know what i mean and then I realized it wasn't. And I was like, wait, are, there's eight comments on here? That's wild. <laughs> and then I pretty much stopped there. I didn't go and like investigate each person's like page or anything. And then I don't think I liked the edit in the end, which is stupid because I wish I could just like refer to it more easily. But it was surprising. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. I mean, it is good. People should yeah. watch it. I know. I need to do that. Yeah, I should do that, but... I'm in the middle of Gilmore Girls. I can't stop. (laughs) (laughs) It's that time of year. I can also understand, like, watching him as Snow for the first time and, like, wanting that. Yeah. So That's a little bit of, like, what I'm, like, on the fence about. I'm like, (gasps) but I don't know, he's already Snow to me, you know? Like, even though we haven't seen any, like, footage or trailer or whatever, you know, like, he's Snow but it's whatever well is that all we have for ballad <laughs> like i said ronnie's not here we need ronnie <laughs> i mean nothing has really happened this week so <laughs> yeah it's been a pretty quiet and, week and then i feel outnumbered with the red outfits so i'll just <laughs> I think I'll just AJ. AJ. Hey, I'm not. I'm not against it. I'm not against too. I'm not for or against. Jerry and I are kind of like in the middle. We'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> okay. Hmm. I need a. I know I'm still not gonna like it. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I need like a higher res image, but I'm like, nah. I think it's always gonna be weird to me, but yeah, I'll get I'm used to it. Sorry. Chase, you're letting me down. No, I'm just visualizing myself in the cosplay at the premiere. Like, I just, I want to match. Never mind. That's going to get misinterpreted. I want to be at the premiere. What? Makes me think the Avoxes, but it also makes me think the movie Us. Oh, Oh, yeah. And that kind of creeps me out. It makes me Mm. uncomfortable. Yeah. Whatever. I'm. I'm here for it. I'm already preparing for the cosplay. I'm already preparing for Halloween next year. I'm ready. I mean, oh don't gosh. get me wrong. I'll be in the outfit with you. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I won't I mean, like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Matthew commented saying that the Capital Citizens outfits are, are good. Are, are they good or red flags? They're not good. I feel like that's a red oh, flag oh. for yeah, like, red flag. the movie. Uh-oh. Yeah. Well, they're, they're very different is the thing. Like, that's where I'm getting these suits kind of confused is because you have these bright red over the top 
I get well, I guess that makes sense then, because they're capital s- citizens or students. But again, they that's not how they're it, it's a literal red flag. <laughs> I don't know, but that's not how the uniforms were described in the book. So I don't know. I don't know. It's fine. I'm sure when we get like the the BTS whatever <laughs> where they explain the choices that they made, like when they the the Trish Somerville bonus feature, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Oh so yeah. Here's here's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Whose idea was this? <laughs> was <Here's it> yours? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, or are she, you ready? Or, or she could be like, you know, I had too much Posca, <laughs> and oh this is God, where we ended up. <laughs> I mean, that's not going to be a good excuse. <laughs> it is for oh. me because it's it's in character. Even though she's not an actor, I'll take it. I'll be like, you know what? You're dedicated. I appreciate you. <laughs> Is Pasco a real thing? I no. think so. Question mark? Is yeah. it? I never bothered to look it up. But... I thought it was a fancy, like, capital term. Hmm. No, I thought it was a real... Because okay. I know it's not necessarily the same thing, but I, like, for me, because I, I wasn't sure if it was real or not, and I couldn't be bothered to search it, but I was like, this reminds me of Absinthe. And I know that, like, uh, okay, I googled it. Yeah, it's an ancient. Pasca was an ancient Roman drink made by mixing wine, vinegar, and water. Ew. Ew. Big oof. No. Ew. They were struggling. I, <laughs> that is no. I mean, it says it was typically a drink for soldiers, the lower classes, and slaves. So, like, I guess, I mean, this is just what the capital can afford right now. Yeah. Here on the just, like, why, we'll drink grape why juice and call vinegar? it Bosca. <laughs> just have the wine in the water if you're gonna, you know, have to dilute it. But why add the vinegar, bro? That's too much. It gives it's it a probably tang. mostly vinegar. Uh, imagine water. your breath after having that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Can't imagine. And the that. hygiene at the time. Mm-mm. Oh. Oh no no no. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well. Thank you for looking that up, Emily. I appreciate you because I never would have done that. <laughs> you know what would be cute though? Wait, just real quick. I'm totally getting way, way, way ahead here. But like, let's say we're all at the premiere, right? And they pass out like little, like, either like little bottled water or like bottled drinks or something. And they call it Posca. And it's not actually Posca because that would be gross. But like, you know, you know That's what, I mean? what I'm saying? We bring like grape juice and then we put like a label on the juice and say it's Posca. Oh my gosh. And then we outfits. become everyone's friends. We're right like, now. hey guys, hey everyone. Oh my god. We brought pasta. <laughs> I like that. It's like the butterbeer for Harry Potter. Yeah. Hey, I wouldn't Ooh. put it past them doing that at the after party. That's what I'm yeah. thinking. Um, or, okay. or also like like similar to butterbeer, how like the bottled water at like the Harry Potter parks um are labeled as giggle water, which right. I think is super cute. It's um, cute. I'll admit yeah. that. Yeah. It's- I'm just saying, I have ideas for this after party. I'm going to call Lionsgate after we get off of here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, is everyone ready for Mockingjay chapters? If you've read them, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> They're good chapters tonight, everyone. They're, good They're sad, though. I'm not ready. <laughs> no. So today we're talking about chapters 11 and 12, which, you know, what happens at the end of 12. Everyone will get there, but it's going to be a tough, it's going to be a dark nope. night for us here on Tribute. Spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we start with everyone down in the bunker because <laughs> the, um, excuse me. Um, <laughs> we start down in the, <laughs> just ignore that coming in the background. <laughs> Uh, we start down in the bunker because district 13 is being bombed currently and we start playing the crazy cat game which is always a good time i love this this line from katniss i'm petty enough to enjoy it because i think it makes him look stupid (laughs) (laughs) she has a great sense of humor she She really does I like how. Um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I like how Katniss will even like she's dissecting the game with Buttercup. It even like it gives us 
a better understanding of even like what goes on in her brain of how she processes information mm-hmm. yeah she's really good character writing oh i know and these scenes especially have a lot to do with like her trauma and ptsd and the way that suzanne writes it mm-hmm. is just absolutely amazing and like you said when you first read the the trilogy you didn't fully understand it like that's how i was too And going back and reading it as an adult is a completely different experience, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Yes, it totally is. You're more mature now. Exactly. (laughs) Yes. Exactly. (laughs) Like, find Pasca. Yes, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then we get the whole line with her and Finnick about it wasn't until Peta hit the force field and nearly died that I and she's like, but you what? And that he's like, that I knew I'd misjudged you, that you do love him. And that was like 13-year-old Holly screaming like, yes, you do love him. <laughs> <laughs> he loves him. <laughs> <laughs> but then we get some Finnick. Mm, that iconic quote from him about how he drags himself out of nightmares each morning. Oh, that hurts. Yeah. Relatable. The time that there's no relief in like the <gasps> It's heartbreak every time. Yeah. And then I get I get so mad here. So after they end up talking, if anyone else has anything, but after they end up talking, Gail gets upset. I'm like, are you kidding me, dude? You need to relax. <gasps> of course he does. That's what he does. Yes. She's like, I think he <laughs> might be jealous. Upset. Like. Gail can think whatever he wants. I'm like, yeah, he can. He can shove it. I hate him. <laughs> like, I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. Hey, I'm with you. These these are his bad moments. I'm 100 like agree. Like that's why is that even on his mind? Yeah, and Finnick is like, at, he's like way older than Katniss. So it's just like also kind of creepy too to even be thinking about that because we have to remember we always forget Katniss is literally 17 years old right now. I don't know. Oof. It also just shows that, like, Gail, like, he doesn't understand the bonds that are made in the arena. True. Like, he just sees it as a superficial, like, oh, someone's flirting with Katniss, but really it's something that's way deeper, and he just is does not get it. I, I'm, I just don't like him. <laughs> yeah. My friend Drew said Gail fell off after the first book. It's true. <laughs> true. <laughs> he did. <laughs> and he was barely in the first book. I'm like, <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> that's where I'm at too. I'm like, listen, in the first book, I really honestly don't mind him. And everything that we learn about him, about like how his friendship with Katniss even started in the first place, like all of that, I'm like, I love all this. All this is fine. It's the minute she comes back from the games that everything falls apart for me. Um, yep and then he turns psycho crazy control freak so Mm -hmm. Mr. Nice Guy I thought it was interesting that um, she mentions that a lot of District 13 was destroyed and the bombings like their old quarters were destroyed so they have to go somewhere else which I just haven't read Mockingjay in forever so there's like things that stand out to me that are not in the book but or that are not in the movie because in the movie it doesn't seem like that much happens or like has been affected yeah especially with that whole line of like they don't know what we have or where we have it or whatever like Mm -hmm. they're kind of striking at them hello yep Okay. There was some fascinating comment there. <laughs> I'm sure. I know they did bad. I'll just wait. Um. So I, I kind of like and also hate the part where we get Finnick saying "want a sugar cube" like back in his like kind of former persona, like. That he falls back into to, I mean, I guess cheer Katniss up, but like, I feel like looking back at this, this is kind of sad because I feel like this is Suzanne kind of like reminding us of what Finnick kind of like used to be like or like how Katniss previously 
knew him Aww. ramping up to like I don't know just remind us about what how he kind of was forced to be I guess mm-hmm. it's like kind of set up for his story I was gonna say like when I when I reread Catching Fire and then Mocking Jay after after reading Mocking Jay or like especially like with in mind Phoenix like origin story I guess if you will is like the whole sugar cube joke thing was not like authentically Finnick either at that point yet you know it was like that was Finnick in his survival like mode I guess yeah um and reverting back to it is either like a coping mechanism or like after wearing that mask for so long you don't know how to put it down and like put it down once and for all because he's like safe now in that regard but it's like you can't just put that down and then there is also of course like the humor but yeah it it makes me sad because I'm like oh man that like funny flirty finnick that we get introduced to in the first place is Mm -hmm. like it's not him and that feels weird like he's funny for sure he has his moments but like in that like that sugar cube moment specifically is like tainted (laughs) yeah I never thought about it that way, but that breaks my heart even more tonight. So <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Just trauma things. Like yeah. you don't really know that at this moment in no. the book, but no, then you don't. she puts it so close to then the next chapter, him like sharing his story, so you can be like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, oh man, I can't have one mm-hmm. nice thing, can I? <laughs> yeah. Suzanne said, "It's only trauma for everyone. Always, no fun allowed." Speaking of which, the PTSD really picks up in this chapter. (laughs) 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 Um, But really, like on page one sixty, just her talking about smelling the roses. Like the sickeningly sweet smell hits my nose, and my heart begins to hammer against my chest. And then it just like she kind of spirals into this actual, like this real panic. And I feel like as somebody who like has anxiety attacks and panic disorder, like Suzanne does a really, really, really amazing job describing Mm -hmm. that sensation. Like I know everyone experiences it differently, but the way that she worded it really is very impactful. And then it gets even crazier on 161 talking about um, having the coffee and she can't breathe. And again, it's just like this spiral out of like what seems out of nowhere. So I love that part. As much as I hate it, I love it. No, I feel the same way to, uh, with like PTSD as a whole. You mm-hmm. know, like that's that's something I've always appreciated, and especially at rereading it as an adult too. Um, having PTSD is like this is one of the few depictions I feel like where I actually relate to it. And actually, I think they they did like a really good job of this in the movie. Oh, this this is a Catching Fire thing, but like when she quote unquote sees Marvel when they're like in district 12 and like she shoots the turkey but she sees marvel and stuff that whole sequence like every time every time i'm blown away by it Mm -hmm. and in the book mockingjay i feel like they definitely do that really well a lot too there's less of it in the movie for sure but yeah i i really appreciate the um, the focus on katniss's mental state in mockingjay because mm-hmm. I feel like the previous two books were like, you're really so concerned about her physical safety and not that that's not important or interesting, obviously, but like Mockingjay kind of takes a beat in that way. And it's like later on, you know, you get more of the physical safety thing, but at least in the first half or when she's in district 13, you really get like a pretty good insight, I guess. Yeah. Again, another point that, I did not realize until I was old enough to realize it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like Suzanne, she writes so well like if, of Katniss in this moment becoming unhinged. And then if you didn't understand it, then she even writes like Katniss saying in, on page 161, designed to unhinge me, like all these things. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. if, if you didn't get it before she's like here <laughs> it's unhinging here guys um <laughs> which is exactly what ptsd and um like that's that's precisely what it does and mm-hmm. she like just so eloquently like paints that out in her writing 
Yeah. And it's so sad every time I read it. Yeah. And then it gets worse on 162. Like, <laughs> oh, like I swing my arms to loosen myself up, place my fists on my hips. And just like this constant, like she's describing all five senses of what she's experiencing and, and just one paragraph. And then all of a sudden it's just over, you know? So, but then on a comforting note, I love how she's like, several sets of arms would embrace me but in the end the only person I truly want to comfort me is Haymitch I'm like Aww. wait a second stop that whole paragraph <laughs> I was just like what like I didn't remember this yeah. it's like so sweet like I love Haymitch Candace and Finnick or Candace and Finnick no Candace and Haymitch's relationship is honestly so incredibly special to me it is so important and I'm soft <laughs> it's so sweet he loves Peta too. And like, it's just so, like, their relationship is so hard to like pinpoint too because it's the back and forth, but you know how much they both care for each other. Mm-hmm. And so seeing that like really sentimental moment between them kind of like solidifies that their relationship is so close and so important to her and to him too. Because mm-hmm. we learn more about his past briefly in the next chapter. They're his family. Oh. Stop. I hate oh. you. <laughs> <laughs> Stop me reading it this afternoon. Be like, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's okay. <laughs> so um, then we decide we're going to go rescue PETA. Oh, yeah. Let's get this team together. <laughs> I would be you the know, first You know volunteer. who volunteered first. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and this is where he redeems himself slightly. <laughs> I feel like it was more like he owed that. <laughs> That's true. True. Like you, you've been on beer bad behavior right now. You need you need some brownie points here. You're not wrong, actually. Yeah, like <laughs> after all the after all the things he said about PETA and the things he said about people in the Capitol, like he knows he's gotta do something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did anyone else think that Gil was gonna die? No. I don't remember what I thought, to be honest. I don't I remember. I thought it was a, totally a possibility. I mean, I'm I wouldn't put it past Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly yes. a possibility for sure, because any, anyone's fair game for Suzanne. But um, I mean, and they were playing it up like it was going to be so dangerous and like, you know, it's going to be costly. You know, people people's covers are going to be blown people could die and i was like oh. i was more concerned for Peta, to be honest susan was like wait for the second half okay i don't think um i don't think she would have ever killed him though because she still needed that point on the you know kind of war theory yeah that's what i was thinking too well when i was reading it the first time i did not realize that so oh I think yeah, when no, I read I it the that. first time, I was just like, let's get through this. Let's see what happens. We have to be reunited. I don't care. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, I was excited for Peter to come back. <laughs> Scrambling. <laughs> I mean, that's a huge decision, too. What always gets me in that is like when they say covers will be blown, people may be killed. Is like, how do you, I don't know. It's kind of like, how do you justify one life for another? Like, why is Peter's life any more valuable than? And the person who's about to be killed for Peter, like, oh, it's Katniss's, like, you- right? Yes, yeah, how Where? Katniss will be like as a pawn, like be used in the as a piece in the game. It's not so much as Peter, but as Katniss, like not being unhinged. Yeah, I know. It's just that, like, who? It, it's more of like a theory or uh, something that maybe Suzanne probably wanted people to think about was like, who gets to make the decisions on who dies for the, the cause and how do you measure their value amongst each other like why you know if someone in the capital was helping out with that then why is their life any less important or more important than PETA's in the process of saving him because right they say covers could be blown and people could be killed because of this and things like that is that true or did I just make that up no no I, I see what you mean yeah yeah I don't I'm not necessarily, I just think that's kind of a fascinating thing to think about as far as war. Like, Mm -hmm. why is one life worth 
anymore just because it might help the war out. You know, it's kind of like, do you drop a, you know, an atomic bomb to stop the war from more lives being killed? And I think it's a fascinating debate to always be had. It is, yeah. And it's, like, helpful in how, like, how the rebels depict the people in the capital, like, Mm -hmm. as a whole, like, if you continue to dehumanize them, it's easier to justify um, doing anything that you possibly can for your cause to win. And then you get to these questions of, like, okay, then let's just be, let's play fast and loose with these lives, you know? That's scary. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I guess that brings us to chapter 12, like kind of overlapping, I guess. Zooming through this, actually. Yeah. (laughs) Kind of a boring chapter. Nothing really happens in this one. (laughs) It kind of ends on a (laughs) font (laughs) loss. If I were Katniss, like maybe this is me, but like if I were Katniss, I would have been like, knock me out for this. <laughs> like <laughs> put me to bed and wake me up when somebody gets home. Like <laughs> could not have He wants that. to go though. Yeah, it's just like send me, I can go. I'm like, oh <laughs> you're late. The bus left. I'm like, you would not be helpful in this mission. Katniss. No. <laughs> I love, I forgot this whole line, so, I mean, I'm skipping a couple pages, but to 169, where she's talking to the camera, and there, she's speaking to Snow. Um, the capital's fragile because it depends on the districts for everything, food, energy, even the peacekeepers that police us. If we declare our freedom, the capital collapses. President Snow, thanks to you, I'm officially declaring mine today. I hate that line. I love that <laughs> line. Why? What? It's like... <laughs> I imagine her saying it really quietly, like, I'm President Snow, I declare mine today. And it's just, oh, I don't know, it's always so oh, cheesy. Oh, I geez. can't make it sound good in my head. <laughs> How do you think of it? Do you think she's, like, defiantly yelling it? Like, like almost like a we burn, you burn with us type thing, or what? I'd like okay, to see. No, wait, I totally agree with Chase. It's super cheesy. I think I he meant, like, the beginning of that with, that. like, the districts, because I, I like that. But then the end of it about See, declaring her freedom like I it's, it's so, so cheesy. nice no and she's I like think looking it's up at a bird that flies over the you know it's like very awkward yeah i feel like there's no way that you say that out loud that it sounds yeah good. that's why i was like holly how do you think that because i would love to know how a person who really likes that like how they picture that because i can never think about well, that it reminds me of her if we burn you burn with us monologue a lot and i think it's just really powerful because it reminds me of that line in the movie and Mockingjay part two, where she's like, I'm done killing snow slaves for him. Like, it kind of reminds me of that. And I just really, I like, I think that one's lines. cheesy too. Oh. Are you kidding me? What? That That's is not okay. Oh. Hey, 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 that is not okay. <laughs> but but thinking about like the, if we burn, you burn with us. Like, I feel like there is a way to say that in a really speechy, cheesy way, but Jennifer, like, delivered it so naturally and so well so maybe she would have done the same with yeah if they had kept it in yeah we just need to see the right actress saying it like in the movie it's hard to imagine yeah i think this line was was this line in the movie i thought president so snow no like explained how like the districts and how the capital their relationship i thought like this was taken away from Katniss right yes it's when he's speaking all the districts like the one right before the executions and the rain and then district 11's out in the Mm -hmm. sun and all that okay yeah that makes sense yeah well I mean I like it and I think Jennifer would do a great job performing it as you all said (laughs) I think there's a possibility it could be good I could I could just never personally think of a way. Like, I couldn't imagine. I've, I've sat there before and, like, how would she say that and make it sound cool? And that's why I wanted to I know. I can't what give she... you that answer because I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> we can DM Kat, uh, Jennifer, Jennifer um, and ask her to deliver this line. Oh, my gosh. If she ever gets a cameo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, we'd have to all pull our... Homes together and get a mortgage on. Yeah, literally. 
<laughs> for the people who have messaged me asking if Jennifer Lawrence will be in Ballad, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Here's four million dollars with like a thirty second cameo, please. <laughs> Sounds fair. might as well just get on cameo at that rate. <laughs> yeah. Well, then the next part gets even more depressing because. Oh, I want to go back to one, yeah, about Finnick 167, where he says one way or another, by the end of the day, they'll either be dead or with us. It's more than we could hope for. So oh, that's hopeful. so dark. <laughs> no, it's so optimistic. <laughs> Ooh, it's, but like, it's foreshadowing, like, Peta is here, but he's also not there with them. Like, he's there, but he's not there. Mm-hmm. And it's like even worse than they could picture. Oh. It's just all bad. Well, then, yeah, we do get to Phoenix's story. So good. Yeah, it's so powerful. And it really deserved a lot more than it got in the movie. In my rating. Opinion. It's yeah. a rating with you. You think so? True. Yes, I think so. I there's yeah, this is like difficult to talk about, but um crimes of that nature are crimes that people have the hardest time looking at and acknowledging in any direct way. Um and unfortunately it's easier to cut it out of a story or minimize it than it is to give it the proper treatment and then still stay within a PG-13 rating mm. because it's very easy to cross over into like uh, a, a more mature rating, unfortunately. Mm. Um, it's just, yeah, uh, it sucks because I think it's an incredibly important detail of world building and and also just like for phoenix arc and narrative and everything but to understand what kind of society pan am is um it's an incredibly important detail and i remember reading that for the first time and then rereading it as an adult a couple of years ago it's one of my i mean i mean obviously it's like i don't mean this in a good way obviously but just like it's one of my favorite um details that Suzanne has included in the entire story I think she saw an opportunity to do something really different but not just because it's like oh this is a a different storyline like this is interesting whatever but like just because it's actually so important um and it's the kind of thing that happens in real life uh you don't have to extrapolate it to oh this is a dystopian thing like no this happens right now um and yeah, so it, even though in the book, it's still not like a major focus, it's given more time. And because in a book, you can get away with more without it, you know, pushing the uh, age of like your audience, like that bracket or whatever. But unfortunately, in a film context, it's really hard to do that in a page, like in a way that feels uh like it's honoring the weight and importance of it within a PG-13 rating. Mm-hmm. Dang. Yeah. yeah. Sheesh. Unfortunately, I mean, like, I wish yeah. that there were ways that we could acknowledge it, you know, and stay within that rating, but it's very hard to do that and do it accurately, you know, um, yeah. So I feel like the way they did do it in the movie was very clever in the sense that it's still in there, but they had, they like, it felt like a deliberate distraction for the audience, you know, like we're watching Gail and the rest of the team infiltrate that Capitol building while Finnick is talking. So like Finnick is speaking and it's kind of like a voiceover type thing, but you're focusing on PETA's extraction and It is a detail that a lot of people like casual moviegoers miss. They don't necessarily remember that part because they're looking at, Mm -hmm. you know, the team extracting PETA, but it's still in there. I was worried that they wouldn't include it at all because they could have very easily have done that. 
Um, and it's funny too, because it's kind of meta because while they're distracting the audience with Gail and the team with Finnick speaking and all of that, it's actually like Finnick is distracting snow. Um, so there's, there's like, yeah, I was, yeah, I was just thinking like, wait, there's, so there's a double distraction going on. Here. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I feel like, you know, given the limits that they had to probably work in, I feel like they did a good job of still including that in there. Um, I often think back of the, to those like deleted um, Caesar Flickerman interviews where he's like really predatory and creepy. Mm-hmm. Um, and that would have been hard to like throw in there and have it not be like jumping out at you, you know, like that would have, and that, that's probably why it got deleted because it just didn't fit the tone of the film. But by the time you get to Mockingjay and the method in which uh, Phoenix backstory is delivered, you can kind of get away with it a little bit more. So I think they did a good job. I have two notes. <laughs> Go for it, Chase. One, I agree with what you said, absolutely, because I watched it the other day in the um, Mockingjay scenes, or, you know, Holly and Emily ranked their favorite Mockingjay part one scenes, and as I was watching that scene, spoiler, it's on the countdown, as I was watching that scene, it was, like, I found myself, obviously I knew the story, but, like, I wasn't even paying attention to Finn. Like, you're almost kind of consumed by the rescue mission. Mm-hmm. And so I agree with what you said. It's like it was kind of a distraction for us. And I don't I didn't like that because as if I didn't know the story, I would have never known his story. So mm-hmm. it was kind of like, why couldn't we have done this in a different way? I don't know how you would do it in a different way, but I was definitely distracted. Like I was not even paying attention to what he was saying. And maybe that's just me having seen it a billion times and knew the story. I wasn't paying attention, but I feel like that would have been an easy one to look over as an audience um for the first time i'd ever seen it i feel like that would have been easy to look over because you're so absorbed in the mission Mm -hmm. and second the one detail i always miss that i wish they would have put in the movies is um the capital people's reactions to all that because i know it mentions plutarch like freaking out Mm -hmm. like when he's mentioning all the crimes and all the you know um sexual whatever that happened to finnick you know and i just think that's always so fascinating because these people had no idea what was going on or they just turned a blind eye to it and i think mm-hmm. it would have even been cool to see like some i mean again then you're cutting into like three different scenes but it would have been even cool to see some capital citizens reacting to this or like caesar reacting to this or i think that yeah. would have been cool but i mean i get they can't cut to everybody but that was a detail from the book that i always loved that how shocked you know plutarch and Cressida, all these people were at what they were hearing like we had no right. idea yeah. and we're even de facto or you know we're defecting from the capital and we had no idea about any of this and i think it's really fascinating you're right you know they didn't do it as good as everyone would probably hope in the movie but it's it's uh it's a heavy scene for sure like i think of movies like red sparrow right which i know is is like not the same thing at all but like for those of you who have seen Red Sparrow, you know, like it, that stuff is addressed pretty directly. And not that you would need to see anything, but it's a very, very difficult topic that gets really dark really fast. <laughs> and then there's also the issue of like, well, would it be like if they had done it in the film, like in the way that it is in the in the book, like give it more space, like would it be detracting from like the main storyline because it just becomes so like because honestly for me like I've spent so much time thinking about Finnick and 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 his storyline and stuff and how and also he's not the only one right like that's another detail that we learned too like he's not the only one that has had this happen to him and 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 that's also big to think about like Mm -hmm. it's not just Finnick and that would be bad enough if it was just Finnick but it's not and it's like it's a way more common thing yeah, impact. I feel like it, it's a wasted moment for Hamish as well. It's yes. like we don't get Hamish's games. And then after mm-hmm. Finnick shares his story, Katniss is like, did that happen to you? And then yeah. we learn that it didn't, but his whole family and, you know, his his girlfriend and everything, we're all killed. And, I and love Joanna. That. 
Yeah, I was going to say, I love that line where he's like, no, I was the example that was held up to the young Phoenix and the young Cashmere's of what, how not mm. to act. I think mm-hmm. that's fascinating. Like they're all examples of what not to do. And, you know, it seems like every few years with Katniss and Peter with Hamish, there's a new victor that shows people what not to do. And then there's consequences for it. And it's, yeah, mm-hmm. that, I've always think that's one of the best lines of Hamish's entire story. Yeah. I, I think about, that, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, ahead. sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, like, I forgot or I didn't even realize that Kashmir was like involved mm-hmm. in that too. Oh, yeah. Oh, and you read the book, didn't you? This, this week? Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, I only remember that because, like I said, it's one of my favorites. So otherwise, I probably wouldn't remember that. This is such a good conversation to jump into. Yeah, I'm that. so sorry. Everyone I saw Ronnie's you pop here. in, Ronnie. <laughs> no, it's okay. It was like, ah, uh, hey. <laughs> I don't know how Hello, to introduce so you. <laughs> <laughs> well, can we hear me? Yes, you're you're all set. Okay, cool. I was gonna just like. Okay, sweet. Um, I'm loving this. Oh, go ahead. Oh, my bad. <laughs> um, I was just gonna say quickly, or I, I guess ask a question that isn't necessarily like. I don't know if anyone has an answer. I don't know if there is an answer, but since it's on the topic, um, at hand. I, when I was reading Ballad, because I've always been super fascinated in, in a morbid way about like Phoenix backstory and, and Kashmir and these other victors. And in Ballad, I was trying to look for little crumbs or like little hints that this would be something that Snow would instill in future victors. Mm. Um, because I'm like, you can't just throw that in there. Like, you, you know, yeah. like someone that has to start somewhere. And reading Ballad and knowing that Tigris, you know, has had some moments of um, making some sacrifices, let's say, uh, I, and, and like wondering how that might have affected Snow or like how he feels about it. Um, there's also that really, really quick line in Ballad. I don't remember it verbatim, but something in an alleyway. Oh, yeah. um, and that... Mm-hmm. I'm like, Suzanne, Miss Girl, you just snuck that in there thinking it would get past me. Yeah. No, it would not. And um, I, this sounds bad, but I, I was glad that she included those details in Ballad. Oh, yeah. Because it just helps, like, further inform Snow's character, like, that much more. And, like, how... <laughs> Like, just the worst. I mean, and I know we say that, like, to joke around, but he's actually, like, the worst. <laughs> I don't know. Well, yeah, he also um, just ignored um, um, Tigress's, like, turn mm-hmm. to potential, like, prostitution when he was younger. Mm-hmm. Right. I always felt, like, that whole bit and, like, how he feels yeah. kind of upset about it. And obviously it's upsetting. It'd be upsetting for anybody. But... I feel like most of us would be upset in an empathetic way. For me, it was like he was, I always, because I remember writing this down in my Ballard journal when I was like writing my thoughts as I kept writing a uh, reading. And for me, it always felt like he, it feels like he's upset because it's a tool that he doesn't have, that he can't mm. use to manipulate people himself. It's and even though that's totally not what Tigris is doing, but like, or anybody in that position would be doing, but I don't know. I have like a whole like unpublished essay. It also feels like this. he thinks she's too good for that. Like right. a snow is too good for that. So right. then I, I guess because he's disgusted by it, but then he eventually mm-hmm. forces the victors to do that. But they're exactly. you know, their district. So who cares exactly. what happens to them? Mm-hmm. And you know, all of this is something that I would love to sit down and ask Suzanne about because it's not something that you can like it's not like a social media friendly mm-hmm. like trending hashtag type yeah it's not a question that's going to come up if she ever sits down with like I don't yeah know, for a regular interview or something right like it's not gonna be at comic-con it's not gonna be on tiktok live like it's not gonna be on anything but it's something that i find endlessly fascinating um and you know it affects so many people in real life um Mm -hmm. and yeah I just I'm just so curious about what her views are on all of that like what Uh, what is she trying to like because I have my theories on what she's commenting 
but that's just my own interpretation but I'd be so curious to know what they actually are if I'm right at all or or what but um yeah but I was I was happy that there were little traces of that in Ballad and that feels very intentional as well as we all know she's a very intentional person and I really love her for that (laughs) yeah I I too whenever I was reading this I was like how did Snow get to this point you know and yeah. my of reading ballad but um I I have a theory that I think that part of why oh, sorry I I think that part of why um Tigress and Snow like their relationship splits off um in such like a horrible way and that is because he does use means like this mm-hmm. and knowing like what happens before he comes to power with Tigris. And I think that's like one of the things that breaks off their um, relationship. Mm. Yeah, I definitely am in agreement with you on that. <laughs> as hard as it is, I'm, I am glad that Suzanne did write this and put this in, in the book because mm-hmm. this is a very mm-hmm. much so like true thing that that happens and I think she's being very brave as an author to like yes. and, and also very like you described it as clever for the movie but she's also being clever here and how she writes about it mm-hmm. and like she's being truthful she's being honest and brave in it um and I and it truly is a war novel because of this you know so yeah uh, it also just makes me think of like the concept of consumption in Pan Am like how many different ways can you consume a human person you know and like in Ballad she even threw like I mean uh, actually even, mm. even in the in the first book where Katniss talks about how like cannibalism is frowned upon oh boy. yes <laughs> Um, Another part of Finnick's like little monologue that he gives though is when he does talk in the movie as well. But I do think it was one of those things. I think Ronnie, your audio is kind of breaking out a little yeah. bit. Yeah. If you want to rejoin, I can let you back in. Because you're you're like yeah. Chase, you're under the water. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Me? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was just say, at least it's not me this time. <laughs> for once. For one I'm at time. home now. I got the good Wi Fi. Not for oh. out of the internet. You're bougie for us now, Chase. Yeah, good. It's uh, relative. <laughs> it's usually not good. I mean, but Finnick Phoenix is then also talking about snow and like the people that he's had to betray and how he rose to power which is also like fascinating it makes Mm -hmm. me wonder if he knows anything about the 10th games like if that's a secret he acquired that's that's interesting i hope he does that'd be so cool i i wish suzanne had had maybe more of an idea about ballad and and like dropped something like that here where oh we God. wouldn't know until we read For us to that he's okay. talking about that so speaking of that i found one little line that i was like i'm gonna take this and run with it <laughs> on page 171 um finnick is talking about um um which i know nothing of and works his way up to the present pointing out case after case of the mysterious deaths of snow advisories or worse, his allies who had the potential to become threats, aka Sejanus. Ooh. Right? Mm. Right? <laughs> I, I was, know, like, I was just thinking about Ballad reading all of this. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just going to find something and I'm going to make it work. So there we go. Betrayals yeah, of the section, heart. Yeah. This whole <laughs> section is like Ballad, like the most Ballad related. What the whole book. Yes, I love it so much. Tonight's not appropriate for who ordered this pig. 
appropriate. It's appropriate. <laughs> um, then what else? Does anyone else have any comments about what we just talked about? I know it's like a really important discussion, so I don't want to just like breeze past it or anything. But I appreciate everyone chiming in on it. You're welcome. It's just sad that we don't get more at Hamish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which Hamish is is just a cool backstory in general. I don't know. And he's like a big character. Yeah. Most impressive games? Question mark. Oh, hands down. Really? I don't think so. I think his was so interesting. (laughs) Here's my argument. It's just because I said it that he has to say the opposite thing. (laughs) I already have this in my head. I already have this in my head. Hey, Mitch, somebody had to win those games. You know, like it was going to be somebody. One out of the 48. But Candace and Pita managed to change the entire rules of the games and get two people out of there. That's pretty impressive. Hey, Mitch did that, though. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. No. Yeah, he didn't really do anything though. He just used what was there. Like he didn't. Yeah, change. exactly. But he did it. He was the one in the movie who said, "Young love." <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. We don't know what he did behind <laughs> the scenes. His hands up in the air. <laughs> Young love. He Young did like love. a chef's kiss. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's so funny. Chase, you crack me up because you'll be like, you'll ask a question, setting it up to where like your yes. tone implies it's that you're like baiting us. And then, yes. and then we'll all be like, yeah, Chase. And you're like, well, actually, no. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, arguing is fun, though. <laughs> I promise I truly believe that. I wasn't just, not, well, I believe it right now. I'm not changing all my life. Yeah, we'll see. Where do you, where do you think Phoenix games fall into those two? Dude, is it like in the middle? I, why don't you back? just tell us, Chase? Yeah, yeah. seriously. <laughs> tell us what you want us to answer. Tell us how it is. Here's what you all should think because I. Think well, it. he's a career, so I mean, I don't think that fits like high on the Four, list. Fourteen, though. Yeah, but he's still a career. But okay, yeah. the career thing in District Four, like I, I've, I've always had this like interpretation that district four is a career district circumstantially Mm. not not because i feel like they genuinely share the same philosophies as one and two because like four is pretty quick to to turn on the capital like they turn before one and two um, do and i feel like the natural skill set that you would acquire from being in a fishing district lends itself very well to a hunger games because not only do you know things like how to fish but you also know how to swim how to hold your breath for an extended period of time you know different shellfish like there's making like tying knots and stuff there's so many skills that come with that that just lend itself well to a games where I feel like if you were from four and even if you weren't like super strong or super smart you would still have like a pretty decent fighting chance and that would make you like a very easy favorite i feel like especially if you can compensate that with like a really catchy personality or something um but if you're from like let's say district three (laughs) what are you going to apply about motherboards in the hunting game (laughs) unless you're beady but like you know what i mean i'm just (laughs) saying but you know what i mean or like transportation what are you going to do build a train track yeah, I agree. Your argument makes one hundred percent truth, one hundred percent sense, or however you want to say. It. <laughs> you convinced me. It's last place. Thank you. That I'm a, a district. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very big District Four enthusiast, and uh, in case you didn't know, and, uh, <laughs> and I'll die on this hill. Thank you very much. I'll be here all week. I'm more of a Seven Eleven kind of guy. Seven Eleven. Yeah. Not the gas. I think District 11. 4 is the most popular though. Yeah, that's yeah. I agree. The reason I just for like it... the truth. What were you saying, AJ? Oh, I just said there's a reason why District 4 oh. is so popular. I thought you were like going thing. to <laughs> explain oh, something. I mean, trust me, I could My go bad. on a whole monologue about this, but I won't. <laughs> I have an original character for that. We don't need to, you know. I'm I'm patiently waiting for my Anabaria speech that will come at a later tribute talk. 
session, but yes. Ooh, yeah. that's exciting. I have very, very deep, profound head cans <laughs> <laughs> that I'm prepared to back up with um, textual evidence. We love sightings from in high school. Like the proof. Hmm? You got the proof. Exactly. And the juice. <laughs> yes, I do. It's <laughs> about juice. Um, a shocking moment for me, I mean, I knew this, but it was shocking again, was that when Finnick and Annie get reunited, Annie has dark hair and not Ugh. red hair. It I just know. shocks me every time, even it's though wrong. I know the answer. <laughs> even like though the, the book wrong came buttercup. first. <laughs> exactly. Even though, but this is, even though the book mm. came first, it's wrong. She has red exactly. hair. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anything else? I mean, she walks in and Peta's home and Gail's home and everyone's happy and they're reuniting, but then... Oh my gosh, but the, the paragraph where she's like, where Hamish is saying like, come on, and then yeah. her paragraph after where she's thinking <laughs> about reuniting oh. with Peta, oh. I'm like, oh. Suzanne, I mean, Ouch. this was just next level cruel. <laughs> next level. This was awful. awesome game. Just reading that paragraph would be on Hunger Games. I just remember this was like a twist that just shook me to my little core. Like when I was like <laughs> mm-hmm. 12 reading this, I was like, what is going on right now? Core memory. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Everyone remember- remembers where they were when they read this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Even, Actually. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah I remember line, this too. It's, it's just, I, okay, I, I argued this in the group chat, but I said, that this is the best chapter ending of all chapter endings that Suzanne has. My lips are just forming his name when his fingers lock around my throat. Like, they're just, again, we remembered where we were. Like, yeah, I would have to best. agree because yeah. this is the only ending that I willingly stopped reading for a little while. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, mm. I remember Dad. stopping in my tracks and being like, what's going on here? And then I was like, took a breath. And then I was like, we need to keep reading. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. The ink's coming out of her eyes. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Chase, Chase. <laughs> yeah, this is a good one, I have to say. I don't remember. I wish I did. I don't remember anything about reading it for the first time. Same. Really? I think the, the chapter ending that like, was the most memorable to me i don't know that it's the best one but it's the one that i remember the most is the like there is no district 12 thing mm. in catching fire mm. like that messed me up i was like what do you mean <laughs> what do you what do you mean here what do you mean i was at hiking <laughs> that was not to tough run, for me noble asap <laughs> the book wasn't out mockingjay wasn't published so <laughs> that would be memorable <laughs> it was awful I remember I'm going back into the arena. That was the biggest one for me. I think I put the book down. Yeah. For a second. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't even know how is that possible. Like you can't yeah, go. That That's really... against the rules. <laughs> Rule breaker. Yeah. It's Primrose Everdeen though. Like that got me for a minute. But then, like then, you know, she didn't volunteer the next page. So they yeah. tell you on the back of the book, don't they? I don't remember I reading the back. I don't of the remember, book. yeah, uh, reading that. I didn't know that. I think that. he kind of spoils it. <laughs> it does spoil I it. I wish they would know that kind of was pointless. I mean, I knew that much going into reading it, but she was going. Games. I think I knew she was going, but I don't think I knew how she got there. So I that probably was a little bit like a well for me too. I just don't remember it. I feel like that was one of the, that was one of my most anticipated things, like getting valid was just like, oh, I'm so excited for these, these chapter endings. Oh, Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she delivered. I was like, I am ready to be hurt again. (laughs) (laughs) Please, please, Suzanne. (laughs) I mean, her power is so strong that I still feel hurt whenever I read a chapter ending like that. Yes. Too much. Yes. I know. Like, rereading it, I'll be like, I know what's coming. 
And then I'm like, what do you mean she's going back into the arena? What do you mean there's no <laughs> Every time I am bamboozled. <laughs> Okay, well, any final thoughts on Mockingjay for tonight or? Oh, that's the end. Yeah, yeah that's it. Know. I mean, PETA, <laughs> wow. we got PETA, but PETA's not PETA, so. Did we get PETA? No, okay, <laughs> did we, we didn't. Stop. <laughs> we got a mutt. We got a mutt. <laughs> yeah, like this, like this chapter of Mockingjay totally changes for me, like Katniss, de- her development, because she had hope of like Mm. maybe returning to how it was before they were split up and catching fire and Mm -hmm. now like it's just for me everything just goes downhill like it's like in the best way possible but it's it's very hard for me but yeah i just have to do my uh what do i want to say Mm, when you have to say something every time just because you have to do it what is that called a catchphrase i don't know yeah, no, it's like not ceremonial, but anyways, whatever. Um, I have to say, I still think that they should have cut the movie off right as he choked her out, and went, it should have went to black. I agree. And yeah. Here's what here's what we can come up with. I know the end, I really like the ending of Mocking Jay Part One, the last scene where they're like, Ooh, ah. oh, I think no. that's cool. Thank what you, you can do, <laughs> what you can do is open Mocking Jay Part Two with Plutarch explaining what happened to Peter and all that. Then you can mm-hmm. have her walking down the hall during the speech. And then the Mockingjay Part 2 title card can go when she sees him. Mm-hmm. And it's thrashing. That would have been a Mr. Francis. Yeah. I mean, Gary told me that. And so that's what I'm <laughs> <laughs> I, that. <laughs> I think you that would have been like, a better ending, personally. You know that like meme format that's like, mom, can we get blank? And then it's like, we have blank at home. And then it's like blank at home. And it's like bad, you know? It's like, can we get PETA back? We have PETA at home. PETA. And then- <laughs> yeah, home. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. hey. No. <laughs> that's not okay. <laughs> I joke because I'm coping. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Chase, you should make that edit and like just yeah. make it and edit and then it'll go viral and then it'll get francis's francis's attention and you know there we go even though ballad won't be split but we could just get like a really sick last shot or something i'll get y'all all the up tickets because he'll we he'll right. be like you are the epitome of the fan base you're coming mm-hmm. to the <laughs> and you're nina the, will the try to stop me at the door the ambassador say, you're the the representative the yeah can i get like a a peacekeeper beret and (laughs) a beret (laughs) no you get to wear the academy outfit yeah you get the skirt i'll decline (laughs) decline get it and then give it to me yeah i'll I'll wear it i'll wear it with pride if it was wear the wear the academy uniform or not go to the premiere i would not go to the Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, that's wow. You really I'm gonna pretend like I have my audio cut out when you said that. <laughs> so bad. What are you gonna yeah. wear when we go to the premiere next year? What are you gonna wear? Like jeans and a like, hoodie. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. It's not gonna attract out. attention. You're gonna get kicked I know. Out. I'm gonna stick out <laughs> because I'm not attracting attention. Ooh. I'm gonna sit like stone face like apathetic and it's really gonna be like well who's he what's he you're, here for? you're being such a gale like, yeah you're being such a gale i love that gale, gale, Go gale. Gabby. tom is gonna interview you yeah exactly <laughs> and he'll think the same thing i did that night at the mtv awards he'll be like wow he really needs a uh, pr person <laughs> that was an awkward interview he did <laughs> but it's okay he's working on it. he's building himself up he's gonna be a big star yeah well we'll see i was like yeah the movie hasn't come out yet rachel let's give him a oh my god <laughs> he's saying like no one even knows what he's gonna do yet. okay so, but how about gosh. we trust her opinion considering she's literally a scene partner with him for like most of the movie Maria. Maria. <laughs> all right i was listening to that t- today you watched that today jay 
I was listening to the song because it was it was stuck in my head for like the past two days. Yeah, Jerry. Support Rachel. Yeah, she'll get her two dollar residual from me. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Ooh, could you imagine money? Hmm? Oh, who, ordered, who ordered this thing? <laughs> who ordered this thing? Who ordered oh, yeah. this thing? Hey. Uh-huh. Okay, friends, is that all for tonight? <laughs> Seems so. I'm waiting a for Chase ending. to say something. <laughs> yeah, we just awkwardly, awkwardly go into silence, and then it's time to go, everyone. But. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gabby, for joining us tonight. Yes. It was such a pleasure to have you. Oh yeah. my gosh. Thank yeah. you so much for inviting me. This was so amazing and I was so excited. And You're I just back am, <laughs> I'm just in awe that you guys responded to my Insta DM. So Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh. No, of course. Yeah. It was so they nice. Still don't respond to mine, so okay. Yeah, we don't. We ignore <laughs> respond to ours, too. <laughs> it's the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> well when i send 40 a day it's kind of hard to keep up hey no one responds to my liam Payne memes <laughs> they scare us <laughs> <sighs> okay well that's why i post them anyway it was so great to have you gabby you're welcome any week you want to come back just let us know because you're amazing and okay, okay. Yeah, you did really good uh, yeah you're next week it. better be here <laughs> <laughs> okay all right don't twist my arm <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but until next week, join us. We'll be talking more ballad and chapters 13 and 14 of Mocking Jay. Woo! 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 Good night. Bye. Bye.